Hello everyone, welcome back for another installment of the monthly Samurai and Ninja Topics video series. This is the ninth month we have been doing this, but some months I have multiple videos for. Continuing with armor and moving down the body, we now come to the shins. In this episode, I will be covering the three main styles of Suneate, the greaves or shin guards. Plus, at the end, I will throw in a bonus piece of armor that I do not think I could turn into its own video. The playlist for this series will be in the description. Please look over there and check out my other videos and the work of other channels on the list. Their main channel links will also be in the description. The Sune Ate began to be used in the 12th century. They make up the third piece of what is called the Songu, or three tools, parts, pieces. Gu has many meanings depending on the context. These Songu are the Kote, the Haidate, and the Suniate. I have covered some aspects of the Kote and Haidate previously, and I will put cards at the end of this video for them. In theory, if all three pieces were part of the same set of armor, the design of the fabric on them would typically match. Like with all other elements of armor, the Suniate would depend on one's wealth and personal preference, and like some of the other armor pieces, not every samurai used them. Kyahon Suniate is the simplest kind of armored suniate. Kyahan are pieces of cloth used to tie down the shin calf area in order to keep clothing out of the way. There were numerous uses for them in various situations. Kyahan suniate are basically the same idea, but with some armor attached. It would seem they were basically bottom rung armor for shin protection, armored shin protection. It was better than nothing and it did provide protection. That was at least until the Edo period, when people may have worn it as part of hidden armor, usually male, worn under their daily clothing, in which case Kyohan Suniate served such a role quite well. Typically small, narrow, splint-like plates called Shino and or Kusari male, shown here is a combination of male with smaller than usual shino were sewn into the cloth in most cases the armor would only cover the shin area and there would be no knee protection the shino or splint suniate were a step up from the kyohan suniate they would have shino sewn into fabric and may or may not include kusari in the gaps between the shino but usually would up until this point they were very similar to kyohan suniate However, the Shino Suniate included knee protection, called the Tateage. On Shino Suniate, the Tateage was most commonly fabric with Kiko, small hexagonal armor plates sewn onto it. This is something you see in a lot of places on the armor, these small Kiko and such. The Shino Suniate were most common type of Suniate. Another difference was that the fabric may be slightly padded and or have a leather backing. Over time, this practice came into use in order to provide a little extra protection between the metal and the shin with slightly thicker cloth, plus it would also allow for some impact absorption. In addition, you might sometimes see part a part cut out on the inner calf, circled here in red. These parts may be just the cloth, or they may have leather added to them. This gap was meant to keep the metal armor from irritating or injuring a horse when riding. The last of the main type of suneate we will be covering in this video are the tsubo, or tube suneate. These were constructed of usually three large, slightly overlapping plates. These plates were custom made so that they could form fit as they wrapped around the wearer's shin and calf. The plates were sewn on fabric like the shino ate. As with the shino ate, this could be padded and or have a leather backing. The plates were either hinged or what seems to have been more common, laced together. They may have the same type of softer tateage mentioned before, but they could also have hard plate type solid tateage. If this were the case, the solid tateage would have padded cloth or leather on the inside in order to protect the knee from banging against the metal. As for the bonus this video, I have this, the kogake. This is mail and plate armor for the top of the foot. It was placed on top of the tabi and wrapped around the ankle and secured. Or they were sewn onto the tabi to create a kind of armored tabi. Either way though, the typical Waraji straw sandals would still need to be worn. This is more of an Edo period addition to the armor. And like the other elements, not every samurai owned them. 
And there we have it, the three main types of suniate that made up part of samurai armor. With this, we have covered very brief looks at many of the main parts from head to toe of a complete set of samurai armor, although the helmet one was a little bit different. I hope that you have been enjoying this series. I am not sure where it will go from here, but I do intend to continue with it as long as the project continues, and there is a topic I think I can have something to say about for that month. I hope that you found this video informative. Please check out more of the series and my other videos that I have. Also, please check out the channels of the other creators on the playlist doing videos for this project. If you liked the video, please consider leaving a thumbs up and subscribing for future videos. Links to social media will also be in the description below. I look forward to seeing your comments. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you will come back for the next one. Until then, take care.